What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Son of a Tech once again, and I have pulled the How to Mine Cubic video because of this post. Don't worry, I'm going to get you back up and running today, and there will be a new Hive OS wrapper coming soon. But basically what happened is it was found that Elo Word, which built the wrapper for the actual miner for Hive OS, was basically stealing solutions and manipulating the addresses so that he was getting paid out. So far, it was at least 15% of the rewards that were reported. Good news is, is that this has been shut down. Binaries have been pulled from allowing him to basically continue to do this and you can still mine it. However, it will be a little bit more difficult. So let's go over that right now. If this is your first time mining cubic, of course, let me get you up and going right there. You'll need to head on over to app.cubic.li and create an account by clicking this sign up button. Once you've created the account, you can log in and then you will go ahead and head on over to your pooled mining and you can select two different options for this there is either a fixed 85 percent reward or a fixed plus bonus reward so you can pick either one of those i have the 85 percent fixed reward here and then of course that was just by clicking the subscribe button once we do that we're going to click the show token button and you'll need this token for later so make sure you keep this tab open or copy this out and put it into a notepad for later. The next thing is we'll need to head on over to this GitHub right here at cubic-li slash client. Link will be down in the description and we'll need to have access to this 1.8.7 version unless of course there's a newer version. Then once you've done that, let's head on over to our workers in Hive OS. We're going to do the example on NV01 here. We're going to highlight it we're going to click the flight sheet and say unset current flight sheet once that is complete we're going to click into the rig and then we're going to remote shell in you can do this on the local network by clicking this local ip or if you are remote you can click the remote access and click hive shell start and then it'll pop open a little hive shell blue button here today we're just going to connect via the web shell because i am on the local network we'll log in the default is user in one i recommend changing that password because it has been compromised in the past via remote sessions outside of the network so just keep that in mind now once we are here we are going to need to go ahead and download the new file so we're going to run a wget command and the actual URL that we copy from the GitHub. So you can right click, say copy link address, go back here, type the wget, and then go through that pro process. All right, so once that is complete, we can run an ls command. You can see here that we now have the file, but we need to extract it. We're going to type tar, T-A-R, dash X-Z-F space, and then we can just highlight this, right click, say copy, right click here and say paste and press enter. Once this is done, we can run another LS and what you'll notice is that we have a QLI client, which we'll need to use some other services that we can utilize if we so prefer. I can go over a more complicated setup in another video that allows it to restart if the minor reboots and that sort of thing. But for now, we're just going to go very simple and we're going to edit. So we'll do a nano command, the app settings. So we're going to right click, say copy once again on the app settings.json file and click paste and press enter. Now we're going to want to go ahead and get rid of everything in here. This one's actually set up for mining on a CPU with one single thread and it is going to a different access token. So we want to get rid of this in all of our settings.json file and then we can go ahead and move from here. So this is, I'm doing it the slow way. Apologies, just so I can talk while I do it. But what we'll need to do is head back over to the GitHub and there are a few different options. This is for doing the GPU and this is for doing the CPU. If you're a CPU guy coming over from Rabid Minings wanting to know how to do this on your Hive CPU rig, you can utilize that. Otherwise, if you're on GPUs, which is what we focus on the channel, we're gonna copy this section right here and then we're gonna go back to our rig and just right click and say paste. And then we need to replace two things. So the 
first thing that we're going to replace is our access token. Yep, you got it. We're going to go back to our cubic portal at app.cubic.li, right click the token placeholder, and then head back on over to the access token, right click and say paste. Once we've done that, we're going to tab down here and correct our alias, and we're just going to make it SOAT-NV01, which is what I have the rig named as. From here, we're going to do the control X and then tap Y to save and press enter. So once we have all of that set up, we can basically go ahead and start a screen. This is so that the miner will run when we disconnect from the shell session. So we're going to do screen and then we're going to do dash capital S and then we're just going to name it cubic and press enter. So at this point, we're going to run the LS command just so you can see that we have these options here. We're going to do the period or dot and then forward slash, highlight the QLI dash client, copy that, right click and say paste and then press enter. At this point, it will go through the process of beginning mining. Now, if you were wondering about overclocking, don't worry, I didn't forget you guys. What we're gonna do is do a control C here. And if you want to overclock, you can actually do this with NV tool. So what you will basically do is you'll run the NV tool command, and then you'll do the dash dash set core offset to whatever your desired core offset is, set your clock at dash dash set clocks to whatever clock you want, and then set mem to whatever memory clock you want. Keep in mind that you can do individual GPUs via their GPU ID by just adding the, basically the comma. I try to keep all of it uniform in my mining rigs just so I don't have to do that every time. But once you have this in, you can press enter, it will set all of the clocks. You see there, it set the GPU clocks and the mem clock and locked them. So that's what we were able to do there. We're going to press the up arrow twice to go back to our QLI client application run command with the dot forward slash QLI dash client and press enter. At this point, it will begin mining and you will begin seeing it in your cubic portal under the miner control. And eventually when you start finding solutions, it will list the solutions right here under the solutions. And this is how you get paid out. If we go back over here, you can see that we are beginning to mine and it is showing basically all of the GPUs mining here at various different rates, which are calculated in IT per second. At this point, we can do control AD that will exit the screen so that the miner will not stop. And if we want to reconnect, we can do a screen dash dash list to, or dash list, excuse me. There we go, which will show us all of our screens. And you can see here we have the cubic to reconnect to it. If we need to make modifications or restart a failed miner, we can do screen dash R and then type in the cubic. We can press, oop, here we go. And that will say reconnect to the screen and we've reconnected, press control A D to quit. And that is how you can mine cubic. Of course, I have the written guide over on sonofatech.locals.com. Don't forget to check out my crypto mining e-course. We're getting close to not being able to purchase equipment once again in the next year. And that's on sonofatech.locals.com that can help you time the market. If you're interested in that sort of thing based off of previous bull run bear market cycles and what I've been doing to maintain running a crypto mining business. Thanks for watching and I will see you next Tuesday.